I want to invite you to join us for the first ever Bitcoin Business Owners Roundtable. On May 22nd, Paul D. Joe, co-founder and former COO at Mudwater, will be sharing about online marketing and using Bitcoin to accelerate your efforts. In addition to helping scale the well-known coffee alternative, Paul is also behind Casey Cattle's recent Bitcoin adoption that went viral on Twitter. After Paul shares, there'll be a live Q&A along with the time to share insights and network with fellow entrepreneurs. You can find a link in the show notes to sign up. Be sure you'll be able to say, I was there when your progeny asked you where you were for the first ever Bitcoin Business Owners Roundtable. Ultimately, what I want to do is to show other people to uh, like move over their fiat life in, into Bitcoin. So if this is the one thing that I can do, this is what I'm going to do. But if, if there's any way I can help other people do that, I, I will. But ultimately, I just want to try to keep all of the, the costs down. I really like how Je kind of Jeff Booth says it. It's just um, bringing down the cost of production for everybody. So if this is my way of doing that and being like the, the sign guy in Bitcoin that helps uh, bring down that that overall cost, that, that would be like my ultimate goal. Welcome to the Business Bitcoinization Show, the show dedicated to helping you enrich your life and grow your business with Bitcoin, the hardest money on planet Earth. I'm your host, Josh Friedemann, and our guest today is Gabe Newland of No Waste BTC Signs. Gabe takes scraps from his sign shop and turns them into signs that promote Bitcoin and Bitcoin culture. I think you're going to enjoy today's interview, but before we get to it, we do have this week's Bitcoin Meetup Spotlight, and even before that, I want to thank those who have been supporting the podcast on Fountain in the last week. Thanks to Danilo TG, Zoresme, No Waste BTC Signs, and User 422-34854 for streaming sats to the show. If you would like to support the show, one great way to do that is by listening on Fountain and either streaming sats as you listen or by sending a boost. And if you send a note with your boost, I'll be sure to read it on the show. Now, this week's Bitcoin Meetup Spotlight is actually the meetup that Gabe co-hosts. The Bakersfield Bitcoin Meetup is a friendly, bi-weekly gathering at Lengthwise Brewing Company. The co-hosts, Gabe and Jesse, are knowledgeable and willing to help answer any questions. Jesse's company, Well Rehabilitation Services, sponsors the meetup by providing everything from appetizers, hats, and books, which are part of their revolving library, to cold storage devices and anything he can buy with Bitcoin. Come join them for great conversation about Bitcoin and the freedom it brings. You can find them on Twitter at Baco Bitcoin or on Instagram at Bakersfield Bitcoin Meetup. Those links are down below, along with a link to the Oshi app, which you can use to find a Bitcoin meetup near you. Now, we're going to get to our interview with Gabe right after this. Business owners, unlock the benefits Bitcoin has to offer your business with the Bitcoin for Business Quick Start Guide. This 27-page guide highlights the six ways you can grow your business with Bitcoin. Check it out in the show notes. Gabe, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, happy to be here. So I like to start off every single interview with a few questions that help us to get to know you a little bit better and give us some insight for our own lives. Are you ready for these? Oh yeah, bring it. Question number one is this, when and how did you first learn about Bitcoin? Uh, the first time I heard the word Bitcoin was in, um, I think it was 2016, and it was uh, from this kind of like sketchy guy. And so he was telling me that he had just got kicked off PayPal and that he accepted Bitcoin. And I was like, uh, that's a little sketchy. I'm, I'm not going to look into that. So uh, then I didn't hear about it again until 2020. And it was uh, my buddy was trying to show me Robinhood and how to like, buy mm. stocks and all that stuff. So then once I started doing some research in there, I was learning about cryptos and I was buying all these all the cryptos for a while. And then uh, then after a little bit, after the price started going down, you start looking into what you have. And then I just pretty much went Bitcoin only from there. Question number two is this. What's an insight or fact about Bitcoin that you wish everyone understood? Well, when everyone asks you like, well, hey, how's Bitcoin doing? Like the first thing that they think about, they're asking about the price. So what I would really want people to know is that Bitcoin is more than just a price. So mm -hmm. whenever they ask me like, how's Bitcoin doing? My first answer is like blocks are coming in in 10 minutes. We just had a halving, like a uh, mining difficulty is at all time highs. So uh, there's so many other aspects of Bitcoin that they don't even understand. That's what I wish they really knew. Not just, not Bitcoin's not just a price. Have you uh, experienced that people understand mining pretty well and like the the incentives there like do you delve into that topic pretty early on with newcomers 
it's very difficult to explain like the process of mining to them. Mm -hmm. So um, the best thing to do is basically just show like blocks coming in. That's the easiest thing, like mempool.space to show them what block or a, what a blockchain is or what it's building on all of that. It's better to just visual, have them visually see like what blocks are. And then you mm -hmm. can try to explain like the mining process and what the, the computers are doing in the background. Question number three, what's the Bitcoin resource you most recommend to other people? I don't think I really have one resource. What I really like to do is talk to everybody individually and see how like they how like to, they like to bring in information. So some people like to read books, some people like podcasts or documentaries. So I have certain ones for certain people after I get to talking to them. But like some of my favorites are uh, like if it's a book, I'll go Bitcoin and the American Dream. I feel mm -hmm. like it's really simple and easy to process. And then if it's a podcast, I'll normally go like Guy Swan. He's got like a lot of basic series, so he's pretty easy to, to take all that stuff in and. Then if it's like a documentary, I really like the um, Great Reset and the Rise of Bitcoin. So it's just something mm -hmm. easy. You can sit back and just watch it. So it just kind of depends on each person. Question number four, beyond Bitcoin, what's a resource, tool, or idea that's been helpful to you or your work recently? Um, well, recently I just signed up for a geyser.fund. Have you heard of the geyser before? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So I've been really liking that. Um, so pretty much like the second I, I set that up, I'd gotten three orders right off the bat. And then uh, they also kind of like let you hold like a, like almost like a storefront to show everything that you have. So, and then it helps you be able to communicate. People can contribute, even if they don't want signs, they can still contribute to what I'm trying to do. So Geyser has been probably the most helpful thing for me here recently. Question number five, we have our final, what we call our arbitrary but insightful question, and it's this. As a general life principle, is it better to ask why or why not? Yeah, I, uh, I struggled answering this one for a while, just going back and forth between the two. But um, what, I, what I was really thinking is with the world that how it is right now, they're trying to get us to question less and less things that they're that they're telling us. So I think the most important thing is that we are asking either one of those because we need to be questioning everything that they're trying to tell us, everything that they're trying to push on us. I just feel like we need to be asking both of those. Meet Linkster, your premier Bitcoin-focused advisor. Linkster caters to businesses, institutions, family offices, and high net worth individuals. They merge your unique financial goals and needs with Linkster's Bitcoin expertise to craft your own sustainable plan to preserve and grow the value of your hard-earned profits and retained earnings. And Linkster is not just advice, it's tailored execution. Connect directly with the founder by visiting Linkster.com. That's L-Y-N-C-S-T-E-R. Dot com Linkster. Secure your future with Bitcoin. Today's episode of Business Bitcoinization is proudly brought to you by Vellus Commerce, where the future of business technology meets Bitcoin. As we journey through the era of Bitcoin and its transformational impact on businesses, there's one name that stands out. Vellus Commerce. Whether you're looking to build a cutting edge website, a seamless mobile app, or custom software, Vellus is your go to team. They've been diving deep into the world of Bitcoin since 2014, making them one of the most experienced groups for integrating Bitcoin and Lightning payments into a variety of digital platforms. But here's what truly sets them apart Vellus Commerce doesn't just build, they bring a wealth of knowledge to ensure your project's success from day one. Their team understands the nuances of Bitcoin, ensuring that your business stays ahead of the curve. And for all business Bitcoinization listeners out there, Vellus Commerce is offering a free consultation to kickstart your project the right way. So if you're ready to future proof your business in the coming age of hyper Bitcoinization, head over to VellusCommerce.com or reach out on Twitter at Vellus Commerce. Let's make Make sure your business thrives in the Bitcoin era. So, Gabe, we're here to discuss today a little bit about what you're doing at No Waste BTC Signs. People who listen to the show consistently will at least recognize your name from the shout outs that I tend to give at the beginning of the show for people who have been uh, streaming SaaS to the show or sending boosts. And uh, you certainly have been consistent in that. I appreciate that as the host. But Today, we get to hear about your business. So if you would share with us about No Waste BTC Signs, what you guys are up to, what your vision is for the business. Pretty much just how it started. I was just working at my sign shop and then I was wanting some Bitcoin signs myself since I'm a sign maker. So I started doing that. And then um, I had a buddy, Shane, he runs the uh, Knoxville meetup. He was just mm -hmm. trying to tell me, you need to do something with your sign things with Bitcoin. So I sat there and I just thought about it for a while. And you know, you, you hear uh, Odell just saying like, whatever you do in the real world, bring it to Bitcoin. So I just kind of mm -hmm. sat there and thought about it. And then I just started, I started making so many Bitcoin signs for myself. I, I just had an overflow. So then I just, I had to have an outlet to get these signs out into the world. So that's pretty much how it started. So anytime I'm making any of my signs now here while I'm at work, if there's extra room on my printer or whenever I'm cutting stuff, I'll just throw these signs in there and just trying to do whatever I can to spread like the Bitcoin message. Because 
whenever people walk into a, a place, if you see like the Bitcoin accepted here sticker, if you see a B on the wall, it's like this uh, subliminal message that it's, it's there. It's always it's always in the background. So just been trying to push that out and like to show people like Bitcoin, put it in their face a little bit. So mm -hmm. that's like my ultimate goal, but uh, to, to, to give it to other people. But as of right now, I've been trying to help um, other people like right now and next month, Bitcoin is for everyone, um, helping them sponsor some signage for them. And then just just try to help out other Bitcoiners, try to make it easier for them to help with their goals as well. I can't remember when you started, but I do remember pretty early on when I got on Twitter I was seeing, I think it was, it was you who was like handing out signs to people, passing them out for free. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and my understanding was that the no waste part is you're taking the, the scraps from signs. Is that true? Is that still the case? And as you're heading over to Geyser, does your model have to change a little bit as you're looking to sell things more consistently on that platform? Yeah. So even on Geyser, I set all of my price targets at a cent. That was as low as I could do it. Um, because I, I, again, I'm not, I don't want to sell these things. I, I honestly, if, if someone values my work, I want them to, if they want to, they can give me a tip or they can contribute to, to my cause. But ultimately it's not, it's not, I'm not here to sell anything. I want to try to treat this as like a value to value model. I want to kind of treat it just the way a Bitcoin is, you know, if, if you, if you like my work, and you want to give me extra, then that's perfectly fine. But other than that, I want to get it as cheap as I can to people and get the signs in their hands. As someone who owns a sign business, do you have preferences on signs? I'm just thinking a lot of businesses, at least with physical locations, might need to upgrade or change things in the future. Mm -hmm. Do you have any recommendations for them as far as what they should be thinking about, what what to lean toward, what to consider when it comes to signage, not Bitcoin specific, but just for mm -hmm. businesses in general? No, it's just you're you're wanting eyes on on whatever you're trying to show. So if, like your front door, like I mean, if Bitcoin stuff, you want the Bitcoin accepted sticker here, but you want it you want it in big uh, like obvious places. So like right in the corner uh, of like my meetup, I'll have like little A-frame signs, so or or banners wherever you can fit them. So it only it only matters of like what you're kind of dealing with and where where all the eyes are whenever people are coming by. So that's mm -hmm. that's the main thing. You want as many eyes on your signage as you can. So. That's what I, I just try to help people if they got a spot where they want to put a banner up or put some decals on. If, if that's what you need, just let me know. Give me a size and, and we'll get it up there. What have been some of the, the projects that uh, people either may have seen if they've been around or just projects that you've really enjoyed working on for people in the Bitcoin community? One of my personal favorites, just because that was very new, it was uh, Gary Leland gave me a chance to go out to a uh, Bitblock Boom, and I made mm -hmm. three big old, uh, like they were like six foot tall uh, logos. So he gave me an opportunity to come out there and, and uh, gave me a table since I, I brought the signs to him. So that was a big um, like way to get into talking to a lot of people, and he gave mm -hmm. me a good chance to to get get started there. But then af after that, uh, I did some signs for Ocean whenever they did their um, their opening yeah. thing. I, I did the signs that were behind them on stage. So. And uh, it kind of just snowballed and I got uh, more and more opportunities to do big things like that. What are your favorite materials to work with? What's the what's the stuff that you enjoy the most? Well, it's actually for both of those signs. It's um, some two inch foam and then like yeah. you make it stand up. So it's like this really like big dimensional like pop up sign. So those are those are probably some of my favorites. So and it's also kind of hard to get like that thickness of material. It's like a, a two inch thick foam. It's kind of mm -hmm. uh, like we had to ship it from China to get it here. Oh, wow. And then I drove it out to to Texas. So yeah, it's, it's some nice stuff. So yeah. <laughs> that's, that's some of my favorite. I think you've already addressed this, uh, indirectly from some mm -hmm. of your previous answers, but before you came on the show, we were messaging back and forth and you talked about how you weren't looking to, with no SBTC signs, you weren't looking to build a business, but to build on Bitcoin. So mm -hmm. could you talk a little bit more about what you mean by that and how that affects what you do with no ways to BTC signs? Ultimately, what I want to do is to show other people to to uh, like move over their fiat life in, into Bitcoin. So if this is the one thing that I can do, this is what I this is what I'm going to do. But if 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 there's any way I can help other people do that, I, I will. But ultimately, I just uh, want to try to keep all of the, the cost down. I really like how Je kind of Jeff Booth says it. It's just um, bringing down the cost of production for everybody. So if this is my way of doing that and being like the, the sign guy in Bitcoin that helps uh, bring down that, that overall cost, that, that would be like my ultimate goal is, and also, cause I, I don't see anyone else like doing that. So it's just, if this is what I can do, this is what I should be doing. So but yeah, it's ultimately just try to, to bring down the cost for everybody and what they are wanting to get done. Hmm. So you also are one of the co-organizers for the Bakersfield Bitcoin meetup as something that we've uh, gave it a shout out to on the show in the past. 
What's what's it like as far as uh, Bitcoin adoption right now for you guys? What do, what are you up to these days, and what are some of the you know the strengths, maybe also some of the the weaknesses or the the things that have kept you guys from moving as fast when it comes to Bitcoin in the Bakersfield area? Well, I feel like we got off to a really good start because the the bar that we were at or the, the it was called Lengthwise, they uh, they were accepting Bitcoin there, so it was really easy to have people come in and start to buy beer with Bitcoin and. Uh, it's really it's easy to show it to them when it's right in front of them. Whenever they can they can grab a beer and pay for it in Bitcoin. So it was a that was a really easy thing to do in the beginning. But then uh, we just they just recently sold. So that's been uh, it's been a little tough because all, all of my signs are gone. And so that was that was a little hard. But most recently we've been we've gotten some new meetings, like some new members, and then um, and they they've been it's been a little bit slower than I've been wanting it to go. But I still just keep uh, keep posting. You'll get new guys that'll come in, and then they're gone, and then you get a couple more that'll actually stay. So that's what I'm focusing on. Those the people that are that actually stay is making sure that they get all of the information and they have somebody to talk to, and all the questions that come up whenever you're trying to learn about Bitcoin. I just try to be there for those people. So that's that was that's my main focus. And, and yeah, Jesse helps me out any way that he can, trying to get stuff to our meetup to to show people how to use certain devices and explain certain things. So. But yeah, it's it's a rough go. There's I've had meetings where I've got two different tables, and then I've got a meeting where I'm there by myself with a beer. So <laughs> there's uh, it's it's a lot of ups and downs, but I'm just trying to stay consistent with what I can do. It's one of those things where even if it doesn't grow as fast as you want, just someone being there every meetup is is huge mm-hmm. because you know it, people will come in in coming months years you don't know exactly for your local area how long it might take mm-hmm. for it to catch on but having someone who's showing up consistently no matter what is is a huge thing have you mm-hmm. found that you have any ability beyond just you know what you had at lengthwise to incorporate what you're doing with no waste btc signs in the local area it's kind of hard to do it locally like um since that was the only place that had accepted bitcoin um, we've been trying to talk to other, uh, places here in town, some other restaurants to, to try to talk to them about it. And you get a couple like nibbles at it, but no one really wants to kind of like dive in and no one wants to get a node and start setting up all the BTC pay server. They don't, don't want to take all those steps. So I've been trying to look in for like the easiest options for people to get set up. I've looked into like, um, like Oshi, uh, so like you can set it up and, and uh, they can do like gift cards through there or. I've even looked into like uh, maybe even Zaprite because I know that's they're kind of a little bit newer. So I just want to try to figure out the easiest way of onboarding somebody without have, having them like here. No, you got to download the whole blockchain and you got to set up your node. And it's it's very hard to do all of that. So I'm just trying to find the, the easiest path forward to try to hit the, uh, to get into the community and teach people about it. But I'm, I'm hoping for the first steps is they'll come to the meetup. They'll hear about it. We can actually talk about it. And then they want to implement it into their business. So that was that's ultimately where I'm at because it's you can't go door to door at a business. And, hey, do you want to accept Bitcoin? Yeah, it's a, it's a little difficult. It's a little bit more of yeah. a sell. I kind of want them to want it first, then we can move forward. So where does No Waste BTC signs go in the coming years? Because now you're on Geyser. It's something that you know people can go over there, check it out. They can purchase one of your signs for apparently as little as one cent, <laughs> uh, and obviously make a donation if they'd like to do that. Yeah. Um, do you do you see the scaling up? Or is it just one of those things that as you have excess materials, you're going to turn those into quality things for people who are interested in Bitcoin? Yeah, I'm just going to keep using all of the scrap material and loading up. I don't know if you can see behind me. I've got like all of my signs behind me. So this, as long as I'm keep making normal signs, the, the Bitcoin signs are going to keep coming out. And then what I what I really want is if someone has something that they would like a, a certain design or if they've got a big plan, just give me a little bit of a heads up. And as I'm making all of my signs, I'll just throw your stuff into it because, I mean, I can only cut the Bitcoin logo so many times. So <laughs> the more ideas that some people have that they can bring to me, I just I just want to help out. And this is this is my way of that I can help people. So just bring me an idea. And that's also like what the cool part is, is even if when people bring me these ideas, I kind of use that and I'll keep it as my uh, as one of the things that I, I, I that I have for one of my signs, I just recently uh, my, my buddy Jesse requested the um, the newspaper article that said Chancellor mm-hmm. on brink of second bailout. So I was like, oh, that's a cool idea. So I just started printing it, and now I've got a bunch of those <laughs> and then a bunch of magnets of that. So it's just the more ideas that anyone else can help me with, the better. But as for like scaling up, it's it's pretty much just me and my wife doing this, and this is just leftovers from my sign shop. So I'm gonna go as far as I can. As of right now, I still got a ton of signs behind me. So. Well, I'll yeah. have a problem one day if I try to scale up, but that's as of right now, I'm just 
doing what I can. <laughs> so if someone's listening to this right now and is interested in reaching out to you or at least checking out your geyser storefront, mm -hmm. what are some of those uh, you've already shared a couple of examples of signs you've made for people mm -hmm. in the Bitcoin uh, community. But what would you say are some of those other like creative things that that people have asked for or that you would maybe even like to do in the future just to get people's juices flowing, thinking, how can I maybe, you know, reach out with a special request for No Waste BTC signs? Um, something I try to do, I try to stay uh, pretty relevant with like the things that are going on. So like whenever they had like the Satoshi, uh, the skull, you know, so mm -hmm. whenever they had that. So I, I printed a bunch of those uh, and I've like I've got these clear acrylic ones that have that on the back. Um, I whenever that lady was calling Bitcoin rogue money, I had a, I have a decal. It's like gone rogue. So it's just if, you, if I stay like in tune with like some of the things that are going on, um, you can kind of get a good, a good idea out of those. And then also kind of like push that message like that. I love that idea about the skull of Satoshi. Like they try to use it against us and we almost turned it into our mascot, you know? So mm -hmm. I also just try to like to, to push the messages that, that Bitcoiners are kind of pushing. So, yeah. um, but, but yeah, I can't, I can't think of anything like specifically it's, it normally just comes from, um, the things that I see online from other people. For people who are going to be out and about at conferences and you know whatever else throughout the summer and fall, are you going to have any booths or a no waste BTC presence at one of these events that people can maybe hunt you down at and uh, meet yeah. you in person, check out what you're doing? So for the last uh, two years, I've been going to uh, Pacific Bitcoin and uh, yeah. I would just walk around. This is how I, I kind of got my name out there is I'd walk around with a bunch of little bees and I would just leave them with uh, leave them all over the tables. And on the back, it's got a little sticker where you can find me on like Noster and Twitter and stuff. Yeah. So that's what I've been kind of doing just to kind of get my name out there. But um, I've also reached out to people at Swan to try to get some of my signs in like their goodie bags, like just here, let's hand them out to every one of the members that comes in. But yeah, I'm just, just trying to get out there. Like I, like I said, I'm going to uh, the Bitcoin is for everyone. So, and then I also did um, Unconfiscatable a couple years ago, or no, it was last year. So anywhere that I can get to and help, I, I will. But yes, I will have a booth at uh, Bitcoin is for everyone. So I'll just try to help them out. And also they're helping me get my name out. So great. And I actually, I mean, Bitcoin is for everyone sounds super familiar. I can't place mm -hmm. where that is or kind of it's, who's connected to that event. That one is, I think it's their first year. They're doing it okay. up in Portland. And uh, the, my contact was Eddie. So, uh, yeah, so he is, they're kind of putting this on their, their first year. So I'm excited to see what, it, what it's going to be. So I, I don't know what I'm heading into either, but I'm just excited to help some other Bitcoiners. Have they announced speakers that you know of or anything like that? Or is it more, uh, you know, workshops with, with local personalities? Um, the, I think the biggest speaker I did see was Jeff Booth was going to be there. So I'm kind of okay. excited to see that. So uh, I'm not I'm not sure who else they pulled in. I'm not sure if they released the full speakers. Um, but yeah, that's I'm pretty excited to see him. Well, uh, Gabe, I appreciate you sharing on the show today. Are there yeah. any final thoughts that you have or places that you would like people to go or things you'd like them to do if they're interested in keeping up with No Ways BTC signs? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd like everyone to try to try out Noster, get it, get yourself an NPUB, come check me out. And then on there, you can, you can just see how free, like, uh, your information can flow, Bitcoin can flow. And you also get to see, uh, keep up to date with everyone that's in Bitcoin with that kind of stuff. So I'd, I'd recommend everyone get a Noster. <laughs> but, uh, other than that, they can follow me on, uh, I'm also have a Twitter and Instagram just to kind of keep up there. But yeah, it's, I like to, to stay on Noster if I can. And what is your preferred uh, client, I guess, is the right terminology for using Nostra right now. Primal is probably my favorite just because how they have the zaps like implemented in there. Domus was really good right in the beginning and then the zaps got taken off. So um, mm -hmm. I haven't, I've tried out a couple other clients, but nothing, nothing as smooth as Primal. So Primal's probably been my favorite here recently. Yeah. I, I started off with Domus and I admittedly haven't done much with, with Noster. But I feel like more and more people are mentioning Primal. It seems like that's the one that's kind of risen to the top is the most popular because at first there were just yep. tons and tons of different options. But that's uh, mm -hmm. I might need to check out Primal. Yeah, there's there's a couple other ones that are really cool that uh, that people didn't think about. Like I, I just showed my wife one that she really liked. It was uh, it was like Nostra dot cooking or, or I forgot exactly what it was called, but it was like a cooking one that uh, mm -hmm. people could put their posts on there. And then uh, they, be, people can make other comments or, or uh, like send zaps to it if they really like the recipe. And so my, my wife loves that kind of stuff. So there's going to be different clients out there in the future that you'll have no idea that it would be like something that be on Noster, but it's it's going to be out there and it's they're just building it right now. So just trying to get used to all of the different clients that people are building as well. 
For sure. Well, Gabe, I appreciate you sharing today about what you're doing at No Waste BTC Signs. Hopefully, we'll get some people checking out uh, Geyser or reaching out to you with some custom requests. But thank you for your time today. It's been a pleasure. Oh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me on. It was a great opportunity to get out here and talk to you. I've been listening to your show for a long time. So this is like a, this is a big thing for me. Well, friends, it's a wrap. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Business Bitcoinization Show. If you want to reach out to either me or Gabe, you can find those links down in the show notes. And if you're interested in a Bitcoin sign, definitely check out No Ways to BTC Signs Geyser page. As always, keep building, keep growing. And until next time, keep living and leading well. If you're a regular listener of the podcast, thank you. If you want to take a further step in your support for the show, you can help us grow by listening on Fountain, a value for value podcast app on iOS or Android. If you hear something you like that you disagree with or anything else, you can share it by sending some sats and adding a comment with your thoughts. Some of you have already done this and I appreciate it. I'm going to begin reading your boosts on upcoming episodes. So if you have some insight or value to add, let the people know. Getting started with Fountain is easy. You can add Bitcoin to your Fountain wallet by using your fiat accounts or any lightning wallet and one of my favorite features is that once you're using the app you can earn sats just by listening on fountain check out the link in the show notes to get started with fountain today